The Democratic race is heating up, with the caucuses and primaries in full swing. As we approach the most important night of the primary season, Super Tuesday on March 3rd, where 14 states and one territory vote, we thought it'd be a good time to look at one candidate who's been causing quite a storm. Mike Bloomberg, the billionaire former mayor of New York City, was a late entrant to the race and has yet to compete in any primary or caucus. Seeing Super Tuesday as his first and best chance of gaining some delegates, he took part in the Nevada debate on February 19th as a result of reaching the threshold of double-digit polling numbers in four recognised polls. He came under fire from all sides of the debate stage, showing that the existing candidates clearly see him as a threat, and the same happened again in South Carolina earlier this week. So in this video, are we going to take a look at who he is, his past career and record, and whether he has a realistic shot at the Democratic nomination? If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. We've been releasing a whole bunch of videos explaining the Democratic primary so far, as well as breaking down other areas of US politics. So if you want to make sure you see our videos going forward, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post. Mike Bloomberg is 78 years old. He was born and raised in Massachusetts before moving to New York City having graduated from Harvard in the 60s. He worked on Wall Street before setting up his own media firm, Bloomberg Media which you'll have surely seen on your TV guide, even if you are in the UK. Having set up and run this business, he's now one of America's top 10 wealthiest people, with an estimated net worth of $53.4 billion. He later decided to enter politics, and at least initially represented the Republicans. He was the mayor of New York City between 2002 and 2013. For the first two terms serving as a Republican, and for the final term as an independent. As mayor of New York City, he was largely seen as a success. His reign did have its fair share of issues though. For example, New York's famously high rent burden increased under Bloomberg, as well as getting criticism for his education policies. Although the numbers may say he succeeded, some suggest that they had a negative effect on lower income children. He gained a murky reputation as Gloomberg for his attacks on various institutions, the most famous example being his ban on smoking in bars, which also influenced the smoking bans rolled out in the UK in 2007. Possibly most controversial were his stop and frisk policies, which he continued to defend until very recently, something we'll touch on again in a moment. Since leaving office in 2013, he's developed quite a positive reputation as a leading philanthropist with his charity, Bloomberg Philanthropies, actually making him the most charitable person in the United States. On top of that, he's been very involved in various environmental issues. In fact, he might have the most experience when it comes to climate of any of the candidates. In the aftermath of the 2012 Superstorm Sandy, Bloomberg embarked on a major citywide effort to limit New York's emissions and help prevent global warming. From there, he served as the UN's climate envoy and headed up C40. As head of C40, he led an international grouping of cities who were committed to climate action. He then went on to chair the Financial Stability Board's task force. Combining together his environmentalism and philanthropy, he's essentially bankrolled the Beyond Carbon campaign, which works to shut down fossil fuel plants. These two elements of his record have definitely served him well thus far in his election drive. However, there have been some controversial aspects of his past, which have, to put it nicely, served him less well, most prominently coming to bear in the aforementioned debates. He's had a history of making misogynist remarks to his employees, with witnesses claiming that he regularly made comments in the workplace, such as, look at that nice piece of ass. He's also been caught on tape suggesting that black and Latino people don't know how to behave in the workplace, as well as mocking transgender people. He's been called out on these comments on the debate stage in Nevada, with Elizabeth Warren asking him to account for the NDAs he allegedly made some female employees sign. 
The mayor has to stand on his record, and what we need to know is exactly what's lurking out there. He has gotten some number of women, dozens, who knows, to sign non-disclosure agreements, both for sexual harassment and for gender discrimination in the workplace. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? Warren continued this line of attack diving into Bloomberg's record in both debates. But it'll be interesting to see how these controversies attack his campaign going forward, as we've seen the current president not be held back by his past controversial comments. In the South Carolina debate, Warren criticised a different aspect of Bloomberg's record, the Republican politicians that he's funded. Let's think of it this way. We're here in Charleston, and uh, you know who's going to be in Charleston later this week? is Donald Trump. Uh, he's going to be here to raise money for his buddy, Senator Lindsey Graham. Who funded Lindsey Graham's campaign for re-election last time? It was Mayor Bloomberg. And that's not the only right-wing senator that Mayor Bloomberg has funded. In 2016, he dumped $12 million into the Pennsylvania Senate race to help re-elect an anti-choice right-wing Republican senator. And I just want to say, the woman challenger was terrific. She lost by a single point. In 2012, he scooped in to try to defend another Republican senator against a woman challenger. That was me. It didn't work, but he tried hard. As a former Republican mayor, Bloomberg certainly seems like an unusual Democratic candidate. That being said, Bloomberg was initially a Democrat before becoming a Republican, then independent, and then going back to the Democrats in the past decade. He's hoping that his track record will help position him as a centrist candidate, giving voters a viable alternative to the leftist policies of the current frontrunner, Bernie Sanders. Having seen the early favourite centrist, Vice President Joe Biden, struggle, Bloomberg jumped into the race. His immense wealth has afforded him the luxury of entering the race late, because of Bloomberg's rather controversial late entry, he didn't take part in any of the initial debates and ignored the whole process where the other candidates were knocked out of the process. And he's even ignored the first few states. Because of his late entry, he's been spending a ton of money to try and improve his polling, increase awareness and progress his campaign. In fact, as all eyes point to Super Tuesday, he's spent $409 million so far dwarfing the numbers of all of the other candidates. His strategy has worked for him so far, closing in on Biden in national polls as the main threat to Sanders. As previously alluded to, he was a centre of attention in the recent Nevada debate, coming under rightful scrutiny for his past issues. But this also showed how strong his campaign has been so far, and how keen the other candidates are to get rid of him. The whole issue of finances has been controversial in itself, with many criticising the way that he used his wealth to jump into the race late, avoiding criticism, scrutiny and the work required of normal candidates. To some, this attitude and approach is enough to stop them from voting for him. For others, it merely highlights the flaws in the whole system that effectively allow billionaires to buy their way into the process. The added interesting aspect of Mike Bloomberg's presidential campaign is his back and forth with President Trump. As two of the richest and most famous businessmen in New York, there's a natural rivalry between them, a sort of macho man competition going on in the background of this race. Bloomberg was recently asked about the dynamic between the two billionaires, before responding, who is the other billionaire, alluding to the huge gulf in wealth between them and the ever-raised fact that Trump received a sizable loan from his father to start his empire. Trump is clearly irked by Bloomberg, recently releasing a wave of tweets mocking his height. It's also clear from his behaviour that Trump is threatened by Bloomberg, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming weeks, and even more so if he were to win the nomination. So that's a brief look at Michael Bloomberg. Although Bernie is still looking like he'll become the official challenger to Trump, Bloomberg's campaign is definitely one to watch as he surges in the polls, especially because of the inordinate wealth and resources at Bloomberg's disposal. What do you think of Bloomberg's campaign so far? Do you approve of him entering the campaign late? And do you think he has any shot of winning the nomination? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 
Also, you can get involved in the conversation over on Discord. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make all of these videos possible.